Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Leo. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Leo, I'm doing your reading with my triple stack of cards blended into one, so you'll see a mix of all three in your spread today. So we've got Root Girl, the disowned self on the split, and the Wailing Tree Reconciliations at the bottom of the deck. So those are some interest, uh, interesting combination of cards there. It's almost like something that's been going on for some time, right? Like this one has a, a child, like a baby's face there and um, kind of poking a stick, it, poking a stick down into the ground or trying to uncover something. And then with the Wailing Tree, It's almost like that's you're still in that situation or you're still kind of caught up in that energy all of these years later. Something that you started way back then as a curiosity perhaps, maybe kind of poking a hornet's nest in a sense. And it's like still dealing with the ramifications of that um, kind of earlier choice still playing out now. Okay, so but look, right underneath that, I'm not receiving a message from these two cards, but I'm just really intrigued by the kind of play of these two birds here, right? Okay, so, but they're not speaking to me, but I find the imagery interesting, so I wanted to show you because it's something like, maybe you're dealing with this still, but right behind it, there's something really interesting and beautiful going on, something like that. Okay, so, Let's pull an overall energy from the Creativity Oracle. So, Leo, I sat down yesterday, like having a completely open schedule, nothing going on. My daughter's at school. It was the whole day free to do your reading. And there was just, like, I, I pulled the cards. There were no messages. No matter how many cards I looked at, there's just no message. And then today, Saturday, gorgeous day, we've got things going on. And I thought, I'll sit down and just pull the cards real quick, see if there's... A message or not and then boom there it is and so it's like okay I gotta get this reading done before we can go out and get other stuff done that we had planned or so it's interesting how that works which is actually how I prefer it I had this job years ago when I lived in Toronto and I worked for a catering company in the entertainment industry where we would go to film sets and concerts and such and that job I didn't know what this generally what the schedule was or whether I was even working or not on any given day until I would have to wake up at like seven o'clock in the morning and call in and say am I working today if I am what time am I working and it's like I'm still doing it's like this it's like that started way back then this kind of like I love of like being in the moment and being spontaneous and not really knowing what any particular day was going to be and it's like it's still going on but I love that though. I absolutely love that. But at the same time, sometimes it's like, but it doesn't, it's, it's not necessarily ideal for that particular day. Anyway, so overall energy from the creativity oracle. What I meant was because I'm still doing that. It's like I sit down every morning and say, okay, cards, are we working today or not? Because I have no idea. And it's never, it never seems to be up to me. It's either, it's like, it's there or it's not. I don't seem to have much choice in the matter. Okay, overall energy overwhelm well that's interesting actually because oh yes we had this card really recently actually um because wh what i'm seeing on the table here for you actually feels almost like overriding overwhelm like kind of bypassing it having um something to do that keeps you focused and busy so that you don't get overwhelmed with like kind of a bigger scenario that you seem to be within. And maybe that's what this is talking about. It's like there's so much going on in this image. There's, there's like these dogs here. There's this pyramid, the butterfly, all of this that's happening. She doesn't, she doesn't have a mouth, which I find really intriguing. She also seems to be levitating. And then there's this whole other landscape underneath her that seems to have nothing to do with the landscape that is apparently surrounding her do you see what i'm saying there it's like she's levitating but then there's kind of like this mountain range or something beneath her 
that seems to be out of um, the perspective, seems to be off for the landscape that she's actually like walking through or something. So it's like all these complex layers of stories. And so, um, it's talking about the work that you do may make you, even though you love it, it may make you feel overwhelmed and burdened, which is interesting from everything that I already said in this intro, but it's not, it's not that exactly. There may be, I feel like there is an incredible amount of stuff happening around you and there's something going on that is keeping you focused. It's almost like maybe you've given yourself a task or it actually feels to me like it's kind of like a relationship is holding your focus because you're starting with the two of cups here. A relationship is holding your focus while you kind of pass through this this land that is just packed full of, it's like there's two, if you stop to kind of take in every detail, you'll be there forever. That kind of a thing. Um, because, okay, so we got the two of cups and the initiation or the crossing and then the four of water on the other side of it. Okay, so it's looking to me like this. There's some sort of, like I said, a relationship or it's coming through with the message of like, we're in this together. So it's you and a particular other that are really either strongly bonded or have just been kind of finding yourselves spending a lot of time together. And it's be, like, while you're going through some sort of a phase in the journey that, um, that it's the whole thing is that it's almost like the universe in a sense the heart of the sky coming next has given this to you or or put this in your path just as you were about to kind of cross this bridge this bridge spanning the abyss in order to almost kind of like keep your head up keep you focused right that's what i'm seeing here it's like keeping your head up looking to the sky keeping your vibration up so that you won't notice in a sense that you're you're in this uh, potentially overwhelming scenario. It's almost like if you stop and look around, which is really interesting because I was saying about how it's almost like she's on top of a landscape, right? So this, let's do this. So and look at that, right? See this, how this is connecting now? So it's like you're, you're right in the middle of this crossing that if you, if you notice, it's like walking on a highway or something, which is interesting because that's here too, right? I don't know if you can see it in the car, in the camera, but there's a really subtle line there that she's balanced upon. So it's like, don't, don't look down. Don't look down. Keep your head up high because you don't want to see kind of like the height that you're in or the details, the details of your surroundings because, because why? because of the overwhelm, because of potential overwhelm. So there's this idea of you're in this together. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff that's coming up here. First of all, I'm thinking of conversations my daughter and I have been having recently, the two of us. It's like we're always together, of course, right? It's just the two of us in a sense. Um, and we've moved like to this location in the past year. She's now started a new school in the past month or so. And it's like, no matter all the kind of new situations that we, uh, introduce ourselves to, it's still kind of just the two of us, right? It's like, we go through all of these, these phases or environments and, we come out the other side, just the two of us, not completely, but it feels that way. That's been part of our conversation lately is about how, you know, that we're having trouble kind of making new connections, right? Like I'm trying to help her kind of find a group or like a new best friend here in this neighborhood that we're in or in her class at school, her new class at school. And it's like the, those connections just aren't happening for some reason. And, and kind of at the end of the day, it's still just kind of the two of us thinking of what kind of adventure we can take on next. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like, we're in this together, it's just the two of us. And that's fine, we always have a great time. We always end up, you know, filling the time and finding interesting things to do. But that's, that's kind of what it's feeling like to me. It's like you and one other particularly, especially in the, for the last expanse of time, have really been kind of almost put together 
because I want to say there's something about the two of you or the connection between the two of you that is helping to keep, you know, kind of like your vibration higher, keeping you elevated in your perspective in order to keep you from being overwhelmed. Maybe should overwhelm seep into the scenario, you might consider um, you know, like if it's tied to your work, basically is what I'm trying to say, because it says the hard work we love can leave us feeling drained and burdened and burnt out. Um, so it's almost like perhaps you are doing work that is ideal for you. It's like very purpose filled. And if you were to become overwhelmed in that, you may consider not doing it or putting it down for a while. And it's like, Perhaps, perhaps this is the case because I feel like it's trying to draw that in a little bit and I feel like it's not quite right though. It's not quite right, but it's something like there's almost an attempt like by the universe or some higher aspect to keep you from associating overwhelm with the task that you're doing, right? Or the work that you do. Do you see what I'm saying? But this relationship seems to be kind of other than that, it's like you have your work, but you also have this relationship that's kind of just helping you stay high vibrational while you go through some sort of a transition or a phase that you're currently in, that if you really stop to examine it, there's kind of a risk of being overwhelmed. So don't stop to consider it. Just kind of keep moving, enjoying this relationship and enjoying the work that you're doing. Okay, so... And then there's this interesting repairing the veil. It says forgiveness, but I don't think that's part of it there. What it was actually looking like is that there's this kind of screen over top. It's this, there's this whole idea of something has been given to you. Like I said, this relationship or something to focus on because you see this four of water, right? It's almost like this four of water, this four of cups is standing at the end of this phase and kind of calling you forward, right? It's like, like I said, it's like you're on this high wire, this tightrope, and they're trying to keep you from kind of noticing how potentially stressful or overwhelming the current phase that you're in could be. But it doesn't have to be as long as you just kind of stay focused on what is being given to you, right? Which is really interesting because then why is it even being pointed out here, right? So the um, just maybe just because it's fascinating to kind of see behind the scenes in a sense, because that's what this is looking like. It's almost like there's scenery um, placed in front of you to kind of screen or mask what's going on back there, right? It's almost like these great big like uh, the like movie studios, like the set coming together and kind of blocking out all the mechanics and the the construction that's going on in the background. You see what I mean there? It's like if you could peek through this, these are like the set closing so that you can't see through. So you can't see through to what's going on backstage in a sense. But what's really interesting is that, well, I wanna say there's something really fascinating going on backstage perhaps. And this is the thing, it's like, maybe it's almost reversed. Maybe it's like this. There's this kind of magnificent show going on in order to kind of distract you from the fact that you've been kind of embroiled in a sense in something that's been like going on for a really long time, right? Something that, you know, you kind of poked at because of curiosity initially, but now it's kind of got you entangled within it. And so it's like, oh, never mind that, Leo. Let's look at this really beautiful and glittery and fascinating exhibition that is happening, right? And there was another thing I was gonna say here that I was I forgot about. There was a reading that I did like two years ago now that this is making me think of, um, where it was like a spirit or kind of like a, a guardian angel, that kind of an energy had come into the reading to tell the viewer that it was like, we're, we or you were about to enter a really difficult phase and they were almost kind of coming in to shield, to shield you. I think it was a Pisces reading, I'm not completely sure. To shield the, the experience and almost kind of drive the boat on your behalf in order to get you through the roughest part because it was going to be kind of a tight squeeze. 
it's it's a little bit like that. That's what this is looking like. It's like something is coming in. The universe is coming in and saying, okay, this is this is this really precarious space it's like passage is assured but it's it's best if you don't kind of look down right okay so that's why there's this kind of screening happening the screening is occurring here with this beautiful show that is going on that's keeping you locked into it because there's this other thing going on with the serpent and the ace of air okay so the serpent today was well it was kind of coming through with that story of the of the snake right where the woman um rescues the snake out of the out of the snow and brings it into her home and eventually it fatally wounds her and it's like because that's the snake it's its nature it's something like that um because i was also noticing today for the first time that there's these feathers in the middle and it's almost like this snake there's actually two of them right there's this two-headed snake in a sense or two snakes um we're kind of devouring this bird here and it was making me think of okay it's something like it's within their nature. It's not necessarily that they're doing anything devious or defiant or wrong. It's completely natural what is going on here that the snake would consume a, another being, right? That's how it works. It was making me think of like when I, when I catch my cats kind of having caught a bird and then my instinct always is to rush in, of course, and to free the bird because my cats are very well-fed kind of fat cats, right? So there's no real reason for them to have to pursue. They're not, they're not hungry. They're just doing it kind of out of frivolity, right? And just playfulness, but it's, there's no real essential need for it anymore. So it's something like that. It's almost like some kind of uh, maybe natural situation has become really gluttonous. And so this ace of air is kind of coming in to correct that situation because this is kind of like the, uh, it's the ace of swords, like the, the sword of truth. Truth is coming in to rectify this situation, which has become out of balance because it's something like, well, it's like that there's two snakes to one bird or there's something like there's, it's gone beyond any sort of fulfilling uh, need or essential basic requirements, and it's become now just this game, unnecessary game, right? So that's kind of happening, I wanna say, behind the scenes, maybe out of your view, there's a situation that is being resolved or an energy that is being rebalanced because it's gotten, it's tipped out of balance where one side is consuming unnecessarily, right? And the interesting thing is, is that it almost seems like it doesn't have that much to do with you, except that you're in its environment, right? So it's like it's surrounding you or it's affecting your life maybe in a lot of ways, perhaps, um, just because of uh, your proximity to it in a sense, right? So it's almost like while this snake is being corrected, do this over here. You're kind of being given this other stuff to focus on. But the other thing is, there's, there is another sort of aspect to this about how it does impact you, I wanna say, because the net caster here coming next, followed by the sweat lodge, there's something about, it's almost like you're being kind of uh, moved through this situation or this environment without drawing a lot of attention to it. But at the same time, there's this maybe simultaneously or maybe afterwards, I'm not sure, but there's definitely a cleansing with the sweat lodge um, that needs to occur because you just being in this environment, it is kind of leaving a mark on you in a sense. It's like your, your net is your energetic net, your energetic body, your auric field is picking up some of this stuff from the environment, um, you know, as you're passing through this, this crossing, this phase, it is kind of, uh, um, you're carrying some of it with you that is wanting to be left in the environment or left in this phase when you cross this bridge and you're you're entering the next bit 
it doesn't really want to come with you, I want to say. It's like it wants to all be left there. So that's why there's this sweat lodge energy happening. It's like there's, it's kind of like a detoxing or a cleansing or a purging that is occurring. But at the same time, what's really fascinating is that it seems like this, this purging phase for you almost is being experienced by you as almost like entering a theater, right? With this entering the sweat lodge. And when you're in there, it was coming through as like one of those IMAX movies where you go into the giant dome and it's kind of like this video broadcast in the, on the, in the inside of the dome. And it's just completely um, immersive, which is interesting. So, okay, this is what I'm talking about, right? It's like, she's got this other landscape beneath her feet but she's surrounded by this scenery. It's almost like the scenery all around you is part of this IMAX movie that is, um, ha seems to have two purposes. It's almost like it's giving you something beautiful and interesting to focus on here while this snake energy is being corrected and you don't have to really engage with it directly or be aware of it directly. Um, because perhaps if you are, it would just add more, add more to your net, add more to your energy field that would then ultimately need to be removed anyway. So it's kind of like, let's just save us that aspect. But the other thing is, is that I lost my thought there. There was two things happening. There's this kind of masking. It's this immersive experience you're being, you're experiencing it as if you're watching a show in a sense. It's like, it's like you're watching a show and all this interesting stuff is being displayed or shown to you. It's something like there are aspects of this going on. Okay. There's something going on out kind of like outside the theater. There's this rebalancing that is happening or this truth coming to, it's like the snake is meeting its consequences for, for over consuming something like that. And there are aspects of it that are kind of in a sense, bleeding through into the experience that you're in. That could be the, the fact that it's kind of being caught in your net and it needs to be removed, right? So you see what I'm saying here? It's like there's, like there's a seahorse here. There's a couple other elements that are difficult to, oh, there's a puffer fish. The puffer fish is an interesting energy. Um, so there's a puffer fish and a seahorse there and it's like those that's being kind of removed from the netting and as it is it's like you're watching that happen but it's almost like it's it's one step removed from this real situation that is going on and it, like i said kind of in an attempt to keep you well there's something like an attempt to keep you from realizing kind of the realness or the severity of this imbalance and how close or impactful it actually is to you. It's like it's being shown to you as if it's a movie or uh, some sort of entertainment. Because especially with these two here, the will of the wisp, what does it say? The treasures hidden in the shadow and the three of fire. There's this kind of an idea here that it's kind of, like I said, you're kind of going into this theater and kind of being shown this show with the will of the wisp here, this treasures being shown, treasures hidden in the shadows. is like you're being shown the treasure while you're in this theater and then kind of coming out the other side, it was looking to me almost like one of those Disney rides that you just kind of, you step onto it and it goes in indoors and you have this, this experience within the ride and all this kind of projection and display and magic happens and then and then you come back out into the light of day right and that's the thing it's like that's that you're in this phase here that's almost in a sense kind of artificial construct but at the same time it contains within it a lot of the real story it's something like how 
movies and s such um, kind of have imbe symbols embedded with them, within them that have these kind of archetypal energies or truths or perhaps are they truth? That's the interesting thing. It's all questionable, right? But it's something like the, it's like you're in kind of an, uh, just for this phase it feels like, and I don't know how long this phase is going on, but just in this phase, it's almost like this dome is being placed on top of your experience kind of keep you like one step removed from the real thing that's happening just outside the theater, if that makes any sense whatsoever, with an, an attempt to kind of keep your net or your energy as unaffected as possible because something like, because, you, because you're, you're leaving this phase soon, it's like on the other side of it, you have to cleanse or purge all of it anyway. So let's keep it as keep it from affecting you as much as possible so that there there doesn't need to be as much cleansing that happens, right? It's like this overwhelm thing. It's they're, they're trying to keep you from being overwhelmed partially because if you get overwhelmed, you're going to stop doing what you're doing and what you're doing is significant or important in some way. Does that make sense? So, but it's like with the three of fire here at the end of the reading, it's kind of like, but the ride is coming to an end soon. And so then what happens? Okay, well, I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended. But the thing is basically, like I said, it's interesting to me that the attention is being drawn at all to the fact that, that there's any sort of attempt to screen or block from your view something potentially really serious that is being resolved and corrected. So that's the thing. It's kind of coming to the end of that phase. So I guess it's the it, it's okay for you to become more aware of it now because you're kind of coming to the end of the of the journey in the like coming to the end of this crossing. And so there's less um, risk of you being overwhelmed that kind of a thing because it's, it's wrapping up anyway and you're kind of, it's like the, the, the doors are about to open. I don't know why it's coming through like that. It's like, if you've been on any of those Disney rides, right? It's like, sometimes you're kind of coming right towards a pro like something that's projected holographically. It's really real, right? And it looks like you're like approaching a wall, but then it kind of opens and then, and you exit. It's something like that. It's like this, Will of the Wisp here is kind of like the final act in that show. And it looks like you're kind of going right towards the wall, but it isn't. It's all, it's like, it's going to open up and you're going to move out of it. Okay. So I'm going to continue to pull cards and see what else wants to be said about this. If you're interested in that link is in the description. If not, I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.